chilly hospitality. With deep premonition, Schubert's romanticism of disillusion in the cycle at whose center stand the words, I have done with all my dreams, reserves for the graveyard alone the name of hostel. The fata morgana of the life of idleness has been seized by rigor mortis. Guests and host are as if spellbound. The former are in a rush. They would prefer to keep their hats on. On uncomfortable seats, they are induced by the outheld bills and the moral pressure of the waiting queues behind them to leave the place, still called with mockery a cafe at all possible speed. The host, however, with all his colleagues, is not himself at all, but an employee. Probably the decline of the hotel dates back to the dissolution of the ancient unity of inn and brothel, nostalgia for which lives on in every glance directed at the displayed waitress and the telltale gestures of the chambermaids. But now that the innkeeper's trade, the most honorable of the professions in the sphere of circulation, has been purged of its last ambiguities, such as still cling to the word intercourse, things have become very bad. Step by step and always for irrefutable reasons, the means are destroying the ends. The division of labor, the system of auto automatized facilities, has the result that no one is concerned for the client's comfort. No one can divine from his expression what might take his fancy, for the waiter no longer knows the menu, and if he makes suggestions of his own, he must be prepared to face rebuke for having overstepped his limits. No one hastens to serve the guest, however long he has to wait, if the person responsible for him is busy. Concern for the institution, a concern that reaches its culmination in prisons, takes precedence, as in a clinic, over that for the subject, who is administered as an object. That the restaurant is divided by gulfs of antagonism from the hotel, an empty husk of rooms, is a matter of course, as are the time limits on eating and on insufferable room service, from which one flees to the drugstore, blatantly a shop, behind whose inhospitable counter a juggler with fried eggs, crispy bacon, and ice cubes proves himself the last solicitous, solicitous host. But in the hotel, every unforeseen question is disposed of by the porter with an irate nod to another counter, usually closed. The objection that all this is no more than a caterwauling laudatio temporis acti does not hold water. Who would not prefer the Blauerstern in Prague or the Osterreichischer Hof in Salzburg, even if he had to cross the landing to reach the bathroom, and was no longer woken in the small hours by unfailing central heating? The nearer the sphere of immediate physical existence is approached, the more questionable progress becomes a Pyrrhic victory of fetishized production. Sometimes such progress horrifies itself and strives to reunite, even if only symbolically, the labor functions that calculation has disjoined. This gives rise to figures like the hostess, a synthetic landlady. Just as in reality she looks after nothing, has no real powers to hold together the severed, cold facilities, but confines herself to the vacuous gesture of welcome and certainly the supervision of the personnel, so also she appears. Peevishly pretty, a, sl a slimly upright, strenuously youthful, faded woman. Her true function is to see to it that the incoming guest does not even choose for himself the table at which he is to be processed. Her graciousness is the reverse side of the dignity of the bouncer.